All right, let's get zombified. Now, if you're noticing the video quality is a little bit better, it's because I connected a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K to a Camlink 4K into my computer. So now, instead of using this terrible webcam, I have an actual proper cinema camera hooked up. So now you can see all of my beautiful blemishes. <laughs> so let's shrink me down and get started. So first off, let's import that mesh and textures. We want the low-res mesh. And there it is, beautiful. And for the textures, I need to hop over. And these are not compressed yet, so I'm gonna open up Crushy. I'll delete this emissive, since we don't need it. And I'll just turn the quality level to one and crush them all. And 500K is a little high for these, but this is basically all we're adding to it, so that's fine. And I'm just gonna overwrite these, so I'll just save all now. So now we're sitting at about one megabyte. So I'll select these. And before I import these, I'm just gonna rename them. And using directory opus, it's really easy. You just go to rename. And then you can change to find and replace. And then we want to change default material to text zombie. And then you can see the results here. So let's apply that. And because I'm OCD, I'm just going to decapitalize these. I'll leave the ORM capital though. So drag those in as well. And we can work on the default material that came bundled with that mesh. So we'll select that, change it to physically based, and then add these textures. We have color, the ORM, and then make sure to slide these sliders up, and then the normal map. And to actually get some light information in here, let's add an environment. And then in the texture, we'll search the AR library and just grab one of these. I think sunrise is usually a pretty nice one. Or if we want to be a little bit spookier, we can go night. I'll use the night one. And it actually got brighter because we already have this ambient light, which I'll turn off, and this directional light, which I'll also turn off. So now we're just relying on that HDRI. And if it's hard to tell what it's doing, you can just scrub this rotation. Get a little bit better balance there. So now we have this mesh, but we need to apply it to an actual face mesh. So I'll right click out here, add a face mesh. And that automatically makes this face tracker here. Now you can see my face flop around inside there. Obviously this mesh is quite large. But we actually won't be using this mesh. So we can delete this whole model because we're going to use that as a deformation mesh for this object. So in this face mesh here, under deformation, we can click the plus and select the zombie face low. Now I was afraid this would happen, but as you can see, the mesh is way too large. If I go to 100%, it totally breaks. So we need to go into Cinema 4D or Blender and kind of rescale this. So I'll open up Cinema. So first I'm gonna grab the face mesh FBX. And then I'm also gonna drag in the OBJ we exported and holding shift to add it to the scene. And you can see exactly what's going on. It's obviously much larger. So with this selected, we need to scale this down and in cinema, you need to make sure you're in model mode and not object mode, because object mode scales kind of the container of the mesh, while model actually scales the points. It's a very confusing distinction, but just stick with model for this. So basically, I want these to be lined up. 
And because we sculpted on the front, we need to kind of use the back edge as a reference. And I don't think this has to be super accurate, but might as well get it close. And notice the face mesh axis is right in the kind of nose point. And this one is centered. So I'm going to hit L to enable axis mode. And then I'll just move it. It's probably at 0, 0, 0. So I think I'll just put those values in down here and hit apply. And then disable the axis mode. So now these are both in exactly the same position according to their axis. And the scale should be 1, 1, 1 on both of these. So now this is properly scaled. So we can delete this official face mesh. And it looks like there's a vertex color tag in here, which we do not need. And because we're using this just as a deformation object, I don't think we need this normal tag. But just in case, I'm going to keep it in there. I'm just going to turn up this Fong angle all the way just so everything's smooth. And I'll rename this to zombie face. So with the selected, we'll go to file, export selected as, and let's just do an FBX. Selection only, there's no animation. We do want it to include the normals just in case. And that should be all we need. Now let's try this again. Back in Spark, we'll drag in this new FBX that we exported. And in the face mesh, under deformation, let's try it out. Now you can see it looks like it is working. It's a little hard to tell what's going on with just this little bit of <laughs> deformation. So let's add one more face mesh. And this will include all of our materials. So in materials, we'll add this default material, which is the zombie face. And again, this deformation needs to be set to that. Now it's a lot easier to see what's going on because you can actually see that deformation taking place on the front. So now we can delete this first mesh that didn't work. And I'll rename this material to matte zombie face. And the second one to matte deformation, and this last texture. And now just to really quickly demonstrate how you can add a second face tracker, we'll right click in focal distance and add a face tracker. And right here it says tracked face one. Let's change that to face two. And this face is still set to face one. So we have one and two. And I'll rename these to Face Tracker 2 for the second face and Face Tracker 1 for the first. And for this one, if we just right click, add face mesh, and then we can just use that same material, zombie face. And I won't bother with the face deformation. I just want to show you how to do these two separate ones. And now I'll switch over to this video I made with two of my face. So now you can see there's one filter, but there's two faces in there. There's number two over here, number one on the right. And of course, these could have different materials, different objects. They could be entirely different effects. But it's as easy as that for making two different faces in one filter. And I'm not going to develop the second face any further, so I'm just going to delete it. Now, up next, we're going to use some visual shaders to better integrate all of this together.